Taking Mary's, taking Mary's. The first time I became aware of Aronia was when I noticed some small shrubs deliberately planted in several downtown areas. One of these had a weather-beaten tag which identified it as Aronia and which also said, help yourself. This seemed to imply the plant had several edible parts. Since I wasn't familiar with Aronia, I searched the web for more information and found its common name was chokeberry. I knew about the choke cherry tree and its tart fruits, but didn't know if the choke berry bush had edible fruits. From my research, I was pleasantly surprised to find that indeed it did. Now who'd want to eat berries with the unappetizing adjective choke as part of their name? That's why from now on, I'll call the shrub by its more pleasant genus label, Aronia. These native shrubs are in the rose family. They prefer moist soil, but can also tolerate other conditions. They're often a popular choice as an ornamental because they don't usually grow taller than seven feet. In mid-April, both leaves and tiny buds emerge together. The closed buds look like they have little stars on them and are protected by their deciduous leaves. These are oval, finely toothed, and grow alternately along the grayish-brown branches. Their undersides are a lighter green. In autumn, they turn brilliant red. The edible white flowers open in May and have a subtle fragrant aroma. They appear in flat groups and have five white petals. Leave the pistils and stamens so the fruit will develop later, then gently remove the petals and sprinkle a few onto salads. Aronia fruits are edible and are red or black. The soft seeds of both kinds are edible as well. Red ones are smaller and resemble tiny crab apples. Smith College has a shrub with red fruits which ripen in early autumn. I prefer shrubs with blackberries since they're more nutritious, one reason why they're marketed as a superfood. These berries are high in vitamin C and anthocyanins, which are dark plant pigments rich in antioxidants. They grow in clusters with a five-pointed star-like mark on their bottom where the flowers bloomed. In early August, they begin to turn black. Berries are best before a hard frost occurs. I collect them whenever their color is deep black. It's fairly easy to harvest a bunch in a short period of time. Their flesh is firm, unlike other berries, so they can be piled on top of each other without crushing. Depending on weather conditions, they can remain on the plant throughout the fall as they're doing here in mid-November. Normally, I don't eat them raw, as they often are dry and bland, but since their flavor varies from shrub to shrub, you may find some tasty ones. In 2022, our area was in the midst of a serious drought. During an eight-day heat wave, the berries in the sunniest spots dried up. Even their leaves were shriveled. And this occurred in mid-August. Surprisingly, those wrinkled berries were okay to eat. Their taste was mild. Since their texture was similar to raisins, I added them to cooked apple dishes and cereals. I was pleased to discover a new use for the berries, which I hadn't tried before. These aronia fruits may look like blueberries, but they don't taste like them. Ripe ones can be astringent and may make your mouth pucker, probably the reason why they're called choke berries. Even though they're not on my delicious fruits to eat list, their berries are perfect for making juice. Fruits are rich in sour tannins, which are found in their skins. When berries are cooked or heated, their bitter flavor is extracted into the water. So place the berries in cold water. 
I do this outside because the process can be messy. They stain. I bet they're a good source of a purple dye. Start out with about three cups berries. Remove the stems, then add two cups water or more. Crush the fruits with a masher. Strain the juice into a container, pour it into a jar, and store in the fridge. I usually save some of the leftover pulp to give to one of my chipmunk friends. The berries have high levels of pectin, and their juice is probably good for jam or jelly making. Since the flavor of this juice is not particularly fruity, I add it to other juices, smoothies, or if I have any excess, I'll freeze it for later. It's about time to take the choke out of this berry. Perhaps give it a more pleasant and exotic common name, like Ravenberry. Thank you, man.